Hi everybody, it's Annabelle and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be doing orchid spotlights on three orchids, starting up with the Celia Bella. Celia are a small group of orchids that were previously classified as Bothriochylus before their reclassification into Celia. They are a group of epiphytic and terrestrial orchid species, mainly terrestrial, and the Celia bella is predominantly found growing as a terrestrial orchid in Mexico and Honduras and Guatemala. So the Celia bella, I treat it as a terrestrial orchid and I actually treat it in a very similar way to Cymbidiums. It has a wonderful, wonderful fragrance of cherry almond or marzipan. You will also see it described as poppy fragranced, but I don't detect that so much. I mainly detect cherry almond marzipan, cherry marzipan, that sort of thing. It flowers in the late autumn usually, I believe, in a similar way to Cymbidium set their spikes in autumn, it seems to require an autumn kind of seasonal variation to start flowering. I've had this orchid for around a year now. I got it in late winter last year and I got it as quite a large plant, repotted it, but it's um, quite a tricky one to figure out actually. I kept it in my orchid room over last winter and it developed some fungal spotting which I since discovered seems to be from keeping it too warm. It's not necessarily described as a cool grower but in my experience it seems to prefer if not cooler temperatures then at least plenty of air movement around the leaves and slightly cooler than what I was keeping it because it was developing quite heavy fungal spotting with me keeping it in a heated room over winter which went away when I put it outside in the spring with my cymbidiums and it set a load of new growths that the flower spikes have emerged from behind so it'll flower along with the new growths starting to get a little bit bigger and you'll notice buds emerging from behind the new growths. It flowers in these kind of clusters of spikes and this flowering is much more visible than the flowering it had when I got it which was just a few flowers behind the pseudobulbs. It's potted in a mixture of ceramis, lecca and pumice in a self-watering pot. I found it really enjoyed the outside environment and although I don't think it'll take the cool temperatures over winter it seemed to really like those day-night differentials and having lots of air movement around the leaves. So that is the Celia Bella. Next we're going to talk about the showstopper of this video and this is the Monirara Millennium Magic Witchcraft and this is one of the famous black orchids and I can confirm it's pretty close to black if not pure black. It has slight red tinges that come through in daylight or natural light that give it a more brownish appearance but this is kind of only in certain lightings. For the most part it comes across as a very rich textured velvety silky black. It's just absolutely stunning. The flowers themselves are very difficult to film and I don't think I would have been able to capture them very well without some additional lighting so I brought it over and made up a little film set because the flowers themselves actually almost kind of suck in the light where they're so dark and you can't see all the finer details and textures that come through from them along with the kind of mixture of colours. In some lights there's almost a kind of greenish iridescence that shines through, greenish blue, um, that really makes this a very beautiful, spectacular flower. It's one that I think you need to see in person to fully appreciate the multi-dimensional colours that really come through in this orchid. It's absolutely stunning. So the Monira is a complex intergeneric hybrid in the Catacetinae family between genus Catacetum, Mormodes and Cycnotes. The Mormodes seems to be predominant in this flower and also in the fact that there aren't two distinct flower forms for male and female. The Moniarara Millennium Magic Witchcraft produces perfect flowers from what I can tell, which means that you won't get distinct male and female flowers that you can get with many Catacetums and Cycnotes. This means that you will get a reliable flowering of this type of flower each time so there isn't guesswork with sometimes getting male and sometimes getting female flowers which I think is a plus point. Another plus point is the fact that these flowers are actually very long lasting for a catacetinae. Some catacetum types will only flower for a week or so before they start to drop whereas this flower has been going for two weeks already and I'm not seeing any signs at all of them fading. It has a very very strong toothpaste-y peppermint-y fragrance combined with aniseed that does fill the room. It is a very strong 
fragrance and slightly medicinal but I wouldn't say it was unpleasant. It just is very strong and this is often the case with many catacetin types and this is actually a fragrance that I've noticed coming through on a lot of catacetums so it must be particular to a few catacetum species this kind of aniseedy toothpastey smell but it is fragrant um, which was one reason that I got it. The other famous black catacetin type is the Fred Clark Chiara After Dark Black Pearl which I actually do have but is a much smaller plant so hasn't bloomed for me just yet. If you're interested in black orchids, the Fred Clark Yara After Dark Black Pearl, the Moats Project Blackout Vanders, and the Maxillaria Shunkiana are some orchids that you may be interested in looking up to see, and they're all very close to black from what I can tell. The Moniarara Millennium Magic is in the Catacetinae family. This family of orchids exhibit extremely seasonal growth habits. They are adapted to lower rainfall over winter and so they go through a seasonal dormancy period over the winter months where there's lower light and lower temperatures, where they will drop all their leaves in many climates. However, if you retain warmer temperatures and higher light, I've noticed that the Moniarara Millennium Magic Witchcraft retains many of its leaves through this dormancy period, and so I continued watering to some extent. I would let dry between waterings to replicate the kind of slight drying that it would get, but in nature it probably would still get some morning dew, so I've never let this orchid go completely dry during winter, just drying out between waterings and then giving a little more water as I noticed that the pseudobulbs still wrinkled in between waterings, which indicates it was still using and losing water. This seasonal growth means that by spring, when new growths emerge, you'll notice extremely rapid seasonal growth. So during the spring and summer months, these orchids require extremely heavy watering, fertilizing and high light, and they will grow extremely fast. Navigating the point between when you have winter rested your orchid and when it's producing a new growth and when it starts to need water can be tricky in many situations. So I reduced watering when I started noticing the new growth emerge because new growths on catacetum types can be very prone to rot. And I've also seen reports that the new growth may develop a reduced root system if it encounters lots and lots of water, that the new roots may stop growing. I didn't notice this, but I did allow it to dry between waterings while the new growth was emerging. When it was quite large and there was an extensive root system in the pot, I continued full watering. So I started filling the reservoir in my self-watering pots fully and not ever letting that dry out between waterings during its active growth season. At the moment, I've noticed that it's using less water, so I am reducing waterings, but it's still flowering and it still has leaves. So it means that it's still going to be using energy and water and nutrients so I'm still watering, I'm just allowing to dry very slightly as we approach the kind of end of season where it's thinking about going dormant. We'll see in my new environment whether it goes completely dormant, in which case I would probably stop watering altogether, or whether it retains its leaves and still wants a little bit of moisture through the dormancy. I'm not an expert with catacetum types and there are many people with much more experience than me. Catacetum care can be very polarizing so I suggest you approach watering with caution and play it safe while you're adjusting to catacetum types and less water is better during its dormancy period. But don't ever let them shrivel away to nothingness is one caveat that I would um, emphasize. So that is the Moniarara Millennium Magic Witchcraft, absolutely beautiful closest to black orchid that I've ever seen, certainly. Next, we're going to talk about another rare colour form for an orchid, and this is the Clisocentron Marillianum Goku Singii, which is one of the few true blue orchids. When we say blue, when we refer to orchids like the Vanders Pachara Light or Cerulea, what we often mean is a indigo purplish, bluish purple. With the Clusocentron Marillianum and Goku Singii, we have two species that do exhibit truer blue coloration for an orchid. This is a hybrid between those two species. It has a beautiful sky blue, marine blue flower that I think is stunning, but it's also very translucent. So in certain lights, it appears more of a whitish blue and it is very light dependent. So during this, I'm going to film under a couple of different types of lighting to try and give you an overall picture of the kind of translucent glacial blue nature of these flowers. So these flowers are absolutely tiny. Each flower is smaller than one of my fingertips. 
and they produce these clusters of flowers that in a mature plant can get quite large. These are recent imports from Equigenera and they are not fully established in my care yet, but they are flowering and they did spike after I unboxed and repotted them after they'd been shipped all the way from Ecuador to the UK. So they've been through a lot and they seem quite resilient in that they're willing to establish and flower still after all of that but they're not fully established in my care they're not fully used to my environment yet and they are going through a transition period so this is not the best display that you could possibly get but i'm very happy to see this as a preview and i probably will if the flowers don't fade soon pinch them off and allow the orchid to establish in my care i have plans to maybe try pollinating some other vandaceous types with these to try and get that blue coloration across they have wonderful terrate leaves and I love this leaf form on a vandaceous type. They are absolutely beautiful, chubby, cute, squeezable leaves that I just think are absolutely one of the best leaf forms, foliage forms on an orchid in my opinion. They are cooler growers so I don't think I would class them as cool growers but they do prefer more intermediate to cool temperatures than warm temperatures and they do like quite a lot of moisture compared to a normal vandaceous type so I am keeping these in self-watering with Lekka. You can see the repot up in the corner here and I will link that down below in the description. They seem to enjoy this, I haven't had any root loss so I'm very happy with that and in general they seem to be doing well. This is one flower that I took off in order to take the pollen out and try pollinating another orchid with it. So I thought I would show you a close up of the flower. So those are the Clisocentrum Marillianum crossed with Goki Singii. I got two initially because I was worried about the import stress, but they're both doing well. So that is a roundup of my three orchid spotlights. The Moniarara Millennium Magic Witchcraft, the Celia Bella, and the Clisocentrum Marillianum crossed with Goki Singii. I really hope that you enjoyed this spotlight video looking at some really interesting colour forms and fragrances on orchids. The Clisa Centrum Marillianum crossed with Goku Singii is one of the few here that aren't fragrant. The other two are fragrant. Um, we have a black and a blue orchid in this spotlight video, so clearly focusing on unique and interesting orchid colours here. I will try and do a full bloom video soon. But for now, this is a little insight into what's blooming and spotlight on some of my orchid highlights. Thank you so much for watching my video today. You know the drill. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a like or subscribe to my channel for more regular orchid updates. I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.